look at this, but we just got an 88 from here. You can see down here, this little drop off couple of. Ta ta! G'day guys, Bernie here with Fish and Boat Magazine. Uh, we're doing part three of our how to turn your tinny, $500 tinny, into a fish catching weapon. So <clears throat> we've already had great success catching uh, some good sized bar and that sort of thing. But what we're going to do now is we're going to show you guys just how we go about doing it. So we are in the tinny, as you can see, we have our hummingbird helix there. And we're going to do a uh, do a scan along. We're just scanning some uh, shallow bank here at the moment, so it's pretty shallow. It's pretty warm. It's about a thousand degrees. But <clears throat> yeah, we'll just go and um, we'll go and show you uh, what we can see on our sounder and what you should be looking for. Very shallow water, a meter or so deep. You can see a bit of a uh, drain there, and there's a fish sitting in there, and there's another fish sitting up up on top of it just here. All right, so we've got a drain coming in from the left, just there, and we've got probably three, a little group of three or four fish there as well, Kenyan Barra probably. A couple more fish coming through there. It's a very, uh, very fish-rich area, and uh, basically I only found it by just um, doing what we're doing now, was just poking along the bank, having a look. Have a look at that. It's a good sized barra there, another one there. And another group of probably smaller king, just there we can see. Alright, super shallow water but you can see those fish definitely rolling through. King there and there. There's one right beside the beam. Right beside the boat I should say. Well, they didn't come up real well there, but there's a couple just sitting there and another one there. Fish everywhere, pretty much. All right, a good size fish there, and there's scattered fish everywhere. Good size barra there, didn't come up real well, not come up real clear there, but. Fish there. There's a real good barrel right beside the boat we just drove over. So we'll just look at some um, uh, settings quickly. So this particular area that we just scanned, go to, so this is upper, oh, area down the bottom. All right, so this is for your upper, so which is your side imaging, contrast sitting at uh, eight, sensitivity sitting at 18, so quite high. So, and scroll speed I think is on around seven or eight, I normally run up between seven and ten. So if you go into the next area and you know like the because the mud's the, the bottom's very muddy here. So if you go into the next area and it's really rocky, you're gonna have to be playing with those settings to get the best out of it. So because obviously it's um it's gonna reflect really badly with that hard bottom. So you're gonna have to back your sensitivity off. So you're gonna have to change your settings. So um Depending on where you are and what your bottom composition is, you are going to have to change your settings a little bit. 
if you were to leave the settings as they are out of the box, you would still see you would still see fish. You would still see good fish. Um, but to get the most out of it, just need just those uh, just those little fine adjustments. So, all right, I've just uh, hit the cursor on the helix. So, on your uh, keypad there, hit that, which brings up your little cursor here. So, what we're looking at here, right where that cursor is, is a fallen tree or a fallen bit of timber, and around that timber. You can see, not real, real clear, but fish there, another one there, definitely one there, another one beside it, and another one there. So that bit of timber is holding quite a few fish. So if I was doing this properly, I would be definitely having a cast at that. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So one is when you go past and it comes up, just comes up on your screen, which means that that is going to be directly under your transducer you guys just have a quick look on the bank you might find a bit of a, a tree or something or a, a snag or something on the bank and directly out into the water is where that's where that tree is that you want to cast that so the creeks only sort of 15 meters wide then if the creeks only 15 meters wide then you can position your boat pretty easily and cast at that bit of timber the issue you'll run into is if it's sort of out of the way a little bit or it's out in the open, you've got no landmarks to go off. So this is one little handy tip that I do. So this one here, so we've got our cursor right on the screen. So we'll hit mark. So waypoint 718 created. Then I'll go on into my GPS and I'll put that cursor on the mark and I'll go and I'll sneak back up to it and might sit you know, sort of 15 or 20 meters away from it, about a car good cast length. And then I'll actually cast at that off the GPS screen. Hopefully that's making sense. So, um, yeah, it's about the, the easiest way that I've found to be able to do it. Sometimes I might fan those casts maybe, um, you know, sort of 15 degrees off the front of the boat maybe, or, or I'll go out to the side of it and sit beside it and watch that watch that bit of timber on the side imaging right beside it and cast from the side so you definitely know that your casts are on the money um if you were you know a family coming out here you'd be able to mark that and you know grab your live mullets grab your live baits and sit probably maybe 15 meters in front of it cast your live baits out the back right on that spot and then sit there and wait and just see what happens sometimes they might bite um sometimes they might not you move on to the next spot so it's just about a little bit of trial and error, a uh, bit of patience and persistence is is the key. You know what I mean? Like you can't go out that just one time and do this and it doesn't work, then so be it. Because, you know, controlling those fish is, is the environment. So something might be off. It might be oh, wind, barometer. Uh, who knows? Because barramundi are an absolute arseholes at times. So, yeah, you've just got to just keep, keep at it, you know, keep trying trying different ideas, different techniques, and uh, good things will happen. Oh, this is the part of the creek. Let's see if we can uh, have a look at this, but we just got an 88 from here. You can see down here, this little drop off, couple of nice bass sitting there. That one didn't come up real well, but he's a good fish, another barra. Good Baz, in the little tinu. Where are you going? Come in, 
There we go, straight on the map. Nice little 88. 88. And the whole prawn, four inch. Beautiful. on the side image, I've still got the motor down so that left hand side is not reading uh, very well but you can see those barras sitting on that drop off there it's exactly what we're looking for when we go out oh, it's another barra coming through there you can sort of see him on the side imaging there a little bit as well which means he's off to the right hand side a little bit oh, there's another one on the left there there's a few more Oops, another good one up on top of there. And um, settings aren't too much far from, um, well, probably a little bit from how they come out of the box. So that's on, that's uh, side imaging up the top. Go down to enhance. This is a Gen 2 as well. So we've got 15 sensitivity, 9 contrast for the. Uh, side imaging up top. Go exit menu. Go to lower. And I normally run it fairly high, so the contrast backed off a little bit, and the sensitivity high. I really, just try and bring those, um, bring the fish out, uh, nice and clear. Uh, I don't mind if it sort of blows the bottom out a little bit. Yeah, as long as you can see those, see those fish, nice and clear. So. Yeah, anyway, we'll have a few more casts and see if we can get another one. Good bad. Ta-ta. So we're just up a little narrow side creek here at the moment and you can see a little congregation of fish just here. So if we look behind us, we'll be able to pick one of those snags to, and just out from there is where we're going to be casting. So we'll be able to spot lock us ourselves, you know, around about here and cast back and know that we're going to be casting at fish. Going. There's still fish coming through there. So yeah, so it's just 12 meters either side we're scanning at the moment there. Oh, there's a big a bar that comes so there's ooh, there's a good little congregation over there. So that bar is up off the bottom. You can see him there and the shadow there, which means he's up off the bottom. But if you have a look at this. Look at that one, two, three, four, five, six. So that little bit of timber back there is holding some good fish. So we go set ourselves up. We could set ourselves up to um, to spot lock and, and cast at that. And um, I'd be pretty confident with how tight they're grouped that we'd uh, we'd probably get a buy out of them. So, but this is for educational purposes today. So I'll. Ref Try my best not to um, to grab a rod out. So I've done some fishing earlier and, and caught a few fish. So sort of it's going to get me through the hard times. So just scanning a little bit of mud bank here at the moment. Let's see, what we can see same settings that we were running before. See a few fish, a couple of smaller fish there. A little 
bit of timber or something out to the left hand side there. It's not a real good shot, but I think I reckon there's a couple of fish in on that, but I'll have to go back and have another a better look. She's a bit shallow there, but you can definitely see a group of fish there, and these are actually bigger barra out to this side. A little group here, and a couple of fish I'd probably say they might be king. I'm trying to steer the boat and do this at the same time. Well, just hit a bit of mud, but there's another little group there, so this particular area that we're sitting here in the moment is gold or there's fish everywhere get the rods out you know spot lock start casting yeah need to get, need to get into it i think i'm gonna have a cast here so